Hello, this is Andrew with the power supply build for the Soundcraft Series 200 mixer. And since my last video, I have received lots of new things. So I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about that and hopefully I can make some more progress now that I got some new parts. So first thing I got was my transformer. My toroidal transformer from, I think it's Antec, out of New Jersey, Antec. So this is an 18 volt toroidal transformer. And I ended up going with the 100 volt amp model. And I was originally going to buy the 200 volt amp model, except it cost a lot more, well, $10 or so more. So. I decided I was going to go for the one that should have enough power, but it's just a little smaller. So just doing a little math, 18 divided into 100 comes up 5 point something or another. So that's how many amps this should be able to deliver max. And I believe I'm going to need three or so. I did do some more reading on the internet that you actually lose some amps to uh, the bridge rectifier maybe and the capacitors when you have a bank of capacitors you can lose some amps to that not sure how or why uh, but that's just something I read so even with all that loss I should still have I hope enough uh, power to power the mixer all right so with this transformer it's got some mounting things here that I'll have to screw into a chassis. It's got a purple wire that is, I guess, it's a chassis ground, or it's directly to the magnet, I'm not sure. But I think I just attached this to the chassis. Then I have uh, two sets of mains wires, and I'm gonna hook it up for 110, so. I believe I hook the uh, reds together and the blacks together. And then I got my two 18-volt uh, uh, wires. And I'm going to have to read how to do this, but I believe I hook from two separate windings. I, I hook up two, uh, two different colors, a uh, blue and a green, and then to make the center tap, and then I have a green and a blue left over for the, uh, for the plus and minus. Uh, the little reading I did said that I should uh, hook it up and, and just check it with my uh, voltmeter. So, I will do that. So, the next thing I want to talk about is I went to a shop in the area in Bellevue, Washington called Vetco. And it's a big electronic store. Um, if you've ever been to Fry's, it's a store... Well, Fry's has just all kinds of electronic stuff. This store has just the little bits and pieces to do a lot of projects. Um, so, it, and the people there are really helpful and they really know their stuff. A lot of bulk stuff. So any, any project that you need, uh, you can just buy a lot of bulk stuff. So, for example, I got myself some, some heat shrink tubing. Some of this was actually by the foot, uh, which made it, made it good. Got some, made it cheap, some heat shrink tubing, um, some mounting for my uh, for my uh, voltage regulators, mounting equipment. Yeah, and they didn't have the right uh, like the insulator for those, so I got these like little ceramic insulators they had. Hopefully they'll they'll work as well. I have a feeling they will. Yeah, maybe. Might be a little too big. Yeah, so those are going to kind of go right there. See if I can't make them work. I got two of the, uh, the right ones, so maybe I can stagger them. Put the two in the middle that are in the middle ones that are the proper ones, and these I can put on the outside. We'll see. And I got some four lead cable. Uh, this is so I can run to the mixer, clunk, and 
also with some 4 port connectors so the cable is going to go in here and this is going to plug into there I got some standoffs for my PCB a little thermal grease, thermal compound for the uh, voltage regulators and power connector. So the one thing I'm missing still is a chassis, something to put this all in. And I was thinking about reusing uh, a computer supply chassis, but what I might do also is over here I got a piece of sheet metal that I bought to just to cover up an old cover up a chimney that didn't have a damper on it. You can actually see where it was covering the chimney, but it's uh, I cleaned it up and I was thinking about just trying to bend this into shape into something usable for a chassis. And I built a little thing, a little jig to to bend my uh, metal. So I'll give a little demonstration of this. It's I'm going to use some clamps and. So basically, I'm going to clamp this down. I had to cut out little notches for the uh, hinges, but I try to line this up perfectly on there and along the seam. Put the metal underneath here. Clamp this all down and just spin this up. Plunk. And it actually, I tried it out and it works pretty well. So I made my own little uh, sheet metal bender. And I also, using Tinkercad, I dummied up some uh, uh, some models for for the power supply so I could figure out how big to make the, uh, the chassis. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and essentially just cut it to the size and fold it, fold it into, fold up so it's a big U shape. And then I'll get another piece that'll come up and over and come down on this side. So that will be, I'll be, uh, yeah, we'll see if I can do this or not. If not, I'll have, uh, I'll have a learning experience trying. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to wire up this to the board. So on my, one of my last videos I had this is going to go right here, except it's a little bit loose, so I'm going to have to get a little piece of, of sheet metal that I can fit in, that will fit right here, cut a, a little smaller hole, and uh, wire that up. So maybe once I get this uh, unscrewed, I'll, I'll film a little bit of that video, a little bit of that, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right.